Hi everybody, this is Lainey from Kemp Joy Farms. I'm here today to do the second in my Seeds of Palooza series, where I talk about the seeds that I have, that I have purchased, what I might plant, what I have planted. I try to just give you any little information I have on the varieties of seeds that I've bought. I'd love for some feedback from you on what seeds you've bought, what seeds you love to grow, any heirlooms that you may have, anything like that. I'd love to hear your comments, so please feel free. Today, we are gonna talk about bush beans. We're gonna talk about all the different bush bean seeds that I have bought. And that's kind of a big, broad umbrella. <laughs> so I had to make a decision how I'm gonna break it down for you. With corn, I broke it down in my first video to the four types of corn that you find in seed catalogs, standard, sugary enhanced, super sweet, or synergistic. And I even threw in some dent corns at the end. Today, I decided with my bush beans that I was going to break it down into colors because I feel like that's the easiest thing to do with bush beans. Three different colors that I'm going to break it down into. Green, yellow, and reds. Uh, I have some purples and reds. I'm going to combine them together because I don't have that many of them. There's also a fourth category that I'm going to show you of seeds that I have, and that is seeds that are really just for shelling or drying. Shell, a shell bean means that you let the pod get mature, you let the bean swell up and get uh, to mature size, and then you just open the bean and take the beans out. Now, they're not dried. They're not at the dried stage. They're at the, they call them the fresh stage, where they're still moist and everything. But you can shell them out like that and freeze them or whatever, and when you go to cook them, they cook a lot quicker than if it's a dried bean. You can also let those beans, instead of shelling them while they're green, like they call it shelling them while they're green, but instead of shelling them while they're green, you can let them dry for a while, a few more weeks on the vine, and harvest them as dried beans. You just open the pod, take the beans out, and um, usually I go ahead, even if they feel like they're dried, I go ahead and put them in a bowl or I'm spread them on a plate or something and put them on my counter for another couple of weeks till they're you pretty sure that they're really dried out. Then you can just store them and use them later like you would red beans, kidney beans that you buy at the store that are dried. So I'm gonna do that category last. Uh, right now, I've got on my table all of my green bush beans. It's still not easy to just show you the green beans real quickly. I felt like I needed to break down all of the bean colors, green, yellow, and purple, red, into whether they're an heirloom an open pollinated or a hybrid. We talked about this with the corn video and I suggest you watch that too to kind of get an idea of what we're doing. But for heirloom, open pollinated and hybrid, I'll just briefly give a description. An heirloom bean is a bean, it's like a designated category. If it's declared an heirloom, that means for over 50 years, some of these go back a couple of hundred years, some of them to the 1800s and all. But if it's been a true plant for that long to where when that plant grows out of the ground, if you harvest the seeds from that plant and you plant the seeds in the ground again, it's gonna grow that same plant. It's just a true plant with the genetics that have been there. And this is a solid growing plant that has been around for over 50 years. That's my definition, my brief definition of what a hybrid is. That's how I think of it. And I just, I'm telling you things in the way I think of them. I feel like it makes it easier than giving you scientific definitions. Open pollinated, they're the same type of plants as heirloom, but they may not have been designated an heirloom because they may not have been around near as long. So, but they still grow. If you, if you grow this plant, you can save the seeds from them. You can plant the seeds in the ground and you're gonna get that same plant coming up, which is what you want when you save seeds. The hybrids, on the other hand, were crosses that were made genetically by plant breeders or you know seed companies, things like that. And they took one plant and another plant, like a parent, father, mother plant, genetically bred them together and came up with the true, the new, the new plant, which is called a hybrid. Now, hybrids are fine. I, I feel like they get a bad rap because people kind of equate them with GMO products, which are genetically DNA modified, you know, for production. That's a whole separate ball game. You can't go to a store and buy a GMO seed if you're just a regular person. They don't sell them straight to the public. So don't worry about it. If you go into a store and you see a hybrid seed, 
it doesn't mean it's GMO. It just means that two plants were crossed genetically. They try to take the best traits of this one and the best traits of that one and genetically put them together to make the new plant, the hybrid, for a lot of different reasons. And it's a good thing sometimes because the hybrids sometimes are more hardy. They breed them to be more disease resistant. They breed them for better production. A lot of the things you eat at the grocery store and all are, are hybrids, you know, because uh, they, they put out enough to where there's a steady supply for a grocery store or something like that. Sometimes as beautiful as the heirlooms are, as beautiful as the open pollinators are, sometimes they're a little bit more finicky and they don't, they give you maybe beautiful tomatoes, but not near as many, not 40 pounds per bush or something like a hybrid might give you. So there's good reasons to grow all the different things. I love all seeds. I'm really not that picky. I do tend to lean towards heirlooms a little bit more just because I love the beautiful stories behind them. I want to help preserve these uh, seeds by saving seeds. I'll show you some of them um, that I've saved as we go along. Mostly it's the shell beans and stuff that I have saved right now. But um, as we go along, I'll show you that. And um, I tend to, to go that direction because I just like really, I'm a story person and I like to know that a bean, you know, has survived since the 1800s and things like that. But the open pollinated, which as I said, are, are the same mechanism, how they work as an heirloom, but they just haven't been designated an heirloom yet. These are beautiful plants too. And I just, I love to grow all kinds of different things. So even if it says heirloom, open pollinated or hybrid, if it's got an interesting story or things like that, I just tend to love to try it, you know, buy a pack of the seeds. And one day when I can make room for it in my garden, I love to put it in. I love to try it. So I get excited talking about it. And I think I just need to jump in and start showing you seeds. So let's start with the heirlooms. The first one, sorry, it's not in great packaging. It's just in one of my good old handy Ziplocs that I use, but it's a white seeded bean. They'll, they'll make some beans, uh, the bush beans will be white seeded, purple seeded, brown seeded, or even black seeded. A lot of your yellow wax beans are black seeded. So, uh, but this is an empress bean, an empress bush bean. All of them that I'm showing you, remember, are produce a green bush bean. They produce a green snap bean, we call them down in the south. But this one came from the Seed Savers Exchange. So it's an heirloom. All of these I'm gonna show you are heirloom. When I jump to the open pollinated, I'll designate that. But that's the first one I have. I have not planted this yet. I think the packaging must've gotten bad and uh, looked like it was gonna tear or something. So I put it in this Ziploc, but I have not planted this one yet. But I look forward to it. It's supposed to be a really good thing. The second one, and this is just a fairy morse package. I think it came in my big extravaganza mega deal that I got at the grocery store one time where I paid one money and $35 and ended up with 373 packs of seeds. So it only came out to nine cents a pack. But I love this bean. This is the last pack that I have left. I'm definitely, definitely going to earmark some of my plants this year and not, you know, you, hate to, you just hate to do it. They're sitting there with these beautiful green beans on them and you can't pick the green beans. You really need to let the green beans on a few plants just keep going and keep going and keep going until the seeds um, develop in there fully, until the, the plant starts drying out. You, you have to do it if you want to save the seeds, even though they put off gorgeous green beans. But the Black Valentine, if you can get these seeds from a company, I would highly recommend you try it. They're the most beautiful beans. They're just, they're full and they're large and the plants just put off a beautiful purple flower and it's just a, a pleasure to grow. So if you can get the Black Valentine, I would suggest it. The next company I have from is Burpee. And Burpee actually puts out some really good seeds. I don't know why I say actually. I guess what I'm trying to say is a lot of people just see some of your generic types that you see at a lot of the, um, stores like Home Depot and Lowe's and places like that. And you think for some reason they're not as good maybe as an heirloom brand you can get off the internet or whatever. But these two that I have from Burpees are both heirloom seeds. One is called their Tender Pod, Burpees Tender Pod. And this one is called the Tenderette. 
And both of these are very, very old varieties that have won awards. And Burpees just sells them. And I ended up with these seeds. I think I bought both of these at Tractor Supply. And they, I haven't grown either one yet. I fully intend to. I have a couple of packs of each and I fully intend to. But the Burpees seeds that I have grown, I think I have a few hybrids over here that I grew a couple of, uh, did great. They did really good. So I have no problems with those. The next seeds I'm going to show you are seeds that I've gotten from the co-ops. Most everybody's heard about Kentucky Wonder. It's a brown seeded. Uh, now they make bush beans. Kentucky Wonder has bush beans and they also have pole beans. But these are their bush beans. And I have grown those. This package has been opened and they did wonderful. I, you just really don't, they're kind of a flat bean. They're not like a round green bean like normally you see when you open a can of green beans. They're more like a little flat bean and um, they're really productive. They're really productive. I would suggest in a minute growing Kentucky Wonders. This is called Top Crop. I have two bags of this size from the co-op Top Crop. A beautiful brown bean with some white modeling on it. A little white speckles on it. But it's from the service seed division, which is out of Amory, Mississippi. And they sell seeds to the co-ops and the feed stores that are around. If you're ever out in the country and you go buy a co-op, and a lot of times they're going to have these kinds of seeds. Down south, for sure. These seeds come out of Mississippi. I'm not sure about in the north. I'm not sure what their sales area is. But they're very good seeds. And they sell mostly uh, only varieties that will grow around here to the co-ops. So the top crop is probably going to be great. I haven't planted it yet. But I have two big bags of these. I'm definitely going to give it a try. This is the tender green uh, bush bean. Another heirloom that's supposed to be wonderful. Only $4.95. I just want to point out the prices on these beans. The top crop and the tender, uh, the tender green. $4.95. I don't know that it's... You can tell on camera. But this is a one pound bag of beans. It has just... It's probably got, you know more than a thousand beans in it for $4.95. Now, you will never plant this whole package unless you're a commercial grower or something like that. You know, you mostly will probably take out 50 or 60 seeds and plant them and still end up with quarts and quarts of beans to put up. So you can imagine if you multiply that time this whole bag, how many quarts of beans you could put up for your family for $4.95. It's just, when you really think about it, it's just amazing. These plants will just give back to you and give back to you. It's just amazing. My packaging got messed up, so I put them in here. But this is the Kentucky Dreamer bush bean. And they will make, you know, a green bush bean. Kentucky Dreamer is also a very old bean. And um, I can't wait to get it going, too. From Hoss Tools. I love Hoss Tools. I always usually have some seeds in every variety from Hoss Tools. This is called the Landreth Stringless Bush Bean. It's always good if it's stringless. <laughs> you don't have to deal with a string when you're trying to chop them into pieces so that you can can them or whatever. So this is um, an old variety as well. Supposed to be good. I've got a whole pound pack here. And it says in their pound pack that it's 1,300 seeds per pound. I would venture to say that the other beans I just showed you probably run 1,300 seeds per pound too. It all depends on how big the seeds are, but most of your bush bean seeds, you know, kind of the same size. So anywhere, a thousand and up, you're probably going to get if you buy a pound of seeds. And this, these seeds will last a long, long time. If you just store them in a cool, dry place, which I do, um, I don't put them in the refrigerator or freezer. Some people do. I've just never, I don't have the room. <laughs> I have too many seeds to be putting them in. I'd have to buy a whole nother refrigerator for my seeds. I think that's silly. I've had good luck just storing them um, in some little three drawer chests that I get from the dollar store with the little drawers. They have, you air can get in around the drawers. They're not sealed shut in there. And my seeds tend to stay just fine. So, and when I plant them the next season, if I use them, um, they could, the germination rates seem to be just great. So, Moving on to Annie's heirloom seeds. I seem to have a lot of seeds from Annie's too. I also have the tender green. They call it the tender green improved bush bean. 
and I have that same bean over here and I cut from the co-op. This is called a Maza or Maza bean. I don't really know, but it's a filet bean. It's considered a filet bean. And what a filet bean is, it's still just a green bean like you would cook and you can cook it the same way. It's just skinnier. It's like a long, thin little bean instead of like a round, regular green bean. A lot of times when you go to restaurants and they'll give you sides of green beans at your nicer restaurant, it's usually a filet bean. This is a French garden bean. French garden bean from Annie's. Now this one says on here, it's only 40 to 50 days and that's really fast. Most green beans, um, they're, they're, it's a variety, but most of them, you know, are like anywhere from 50 to 60 days. You know, some of them are more than 60 days. But to get one that says it's 40 to 50, that's pretty, that's pretty fast. So if you need a bean to really kind of come out early and start producing, that's a good one for you. This is the Blue Lake bush bean. You see, this one's 53 to four, uh, 58 days. So you just can't tell. Now, the last uh, company I'm gonna show you beans from is Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds out of Mansfield, Missouri. This is the one I was speaking about on my seed catalog video. It's called the Cantari Bean. A lot of these green beans look alike when I flash these seed packets. However, I can just tell you that this bean is absolutely gorgeous when you plant it and when it comes up. It just puts off the most smooth green pods that are just gorgeous. You hate to even pick them. And I didn't save seeds before, but I have this second packet of uh, seeds that I'm going to plant at some point. And this time I'm definitely going to designate a few plants and save the seeds. From Baker Creek also, this is the Kalima beans. And it's also, I believe, kind of like a filet bean. It's long and slim. It's like a filet bean. This one I'm interested to plant. I haven't done it yet. I don't know why, but it's called a Thai soldier bean. This bean, I think, will get up to a couple of feet long. It says it doesn't need trellising, but I looked at a lot of the reviews on the internet, and people said it really sprawled out and, and climbed everywhere. So people on the internet said they'd recommend trellising. If you've grown Thai soldier, I'd be curious to know, because I hate to not have trellising put in, when I plant something, I like to go ahead and have it in the ground before I plant because I don't want to come. I have to use my tractor to help me put posts in the ground for my netting, for my trellising. I don't want to bring the tractor into my garden once I have a lot of stuff planted. So I like to put the poles in before I plant. Like when I make out my garden schematic, go ahead and put my post in the ground. So if a plant needs to sprawl and it needs to climb you know i'd like to know beforehand before i plant it so this next bean that i wanted to show you doesn't have a picture on it but it's called dragon's tongue which a lot of people have grown i believe this one is the one that is um kind of yellowish with purple stripes if i'm wrong i, I might be wrong about it but i haven't grown dragon's tongue yet there's a lot of beans that are striped like that, like rattlesnake pole beans and this dragon's tongue. And the next one that I'm going to show you, which is called a bolado bush bean, or they call it tongues of fire. But you see how it's green with little red um, modeling on it. They call it red stripes. But it's called a bolado bush bean. And I think I grew it last year. I just didn't realize it was this bean. But I have a packet of beans here that I got from Nichols Garden Nursery. And Nichols is out of Albany, Oregon. Okay, well, this one's called a Borlado Cranberry Bean. And I did grow that last year. And when it came up, it looked just like this. Matter of fact, right around harvest time, it kind of turned more red with um, some white stripes. They kind of change colors as they go. But this one is called a Borlato bush, and this one's called a Borlato cranberry, and they look just alike. So, and this on the back even says that this is a bush-type plant that makes great snap beans, but it also makes an outstanding baked cranberry-like bean. So, this one specifically says it's a cranberry bean that a lot of people in the north use to make baked beans with. So, I'm pretty sure it's the same bean. 
that's just funny how that happens. Sometimes the seeds are named different things by different companies and packaged that way. And it can get a little confusing, but it's fine. If it comes up and it does good, I'm happy. Now we're going to move to open pollinated, which are still true plants. These, if you save the seeds from these, you can plant them again and you will get these same plants. So that's a good thing. The first company, it's a wonderful little seed company called Territorial Seed Company. They're out of Cottage Grove, Oregon, another Oregon company. Um, that I bought four different types of open pollinated seeds from them. One of them, I'll go ahead and show you this last one. One of them called Oregon 91G. I wasn't sure it would grow here. I did put a few in last year and they didn't thrive. But I was saying the other day when I was talking about lime in my soil, some of my beans this year, I could just tell something was wrong. Like they weren't thriving. And I got, I got some beans off of plants. I did do a lot of canning. I put up things, but it wasn't near as good as it was in 2020. And I could just tell my plants were not getting what they needed. And with my time constraints this year, I just didn't give them what they needed. So I'm not giving up on the Oregon 91Gs. Um, if I do grow the last part of this pack, I might just mark them to save seeds so that I can expand my seeds on them and not so much worry about whether I can can them for green beans because I have a lot of green beans canned right now. So that's what I might do with that. The next one is called Wyatt, a 54-day bean. Most of these are, are five and a half to six and a half inch beans. This one is called a Hickok, Hickok bean. And the last one is called an Antigua. When it's all said and done, they might all look a lot alike, but sometimes one variety will just hit at your property with your soil and your land. And so it's good to have a variety so that you can figure out what grows at your house. From house tools and open pollinated beans, I have the bronco bean, and I hear about the bronco bean a lot. I think that's supposed to be a really good bean. I've just got to open my package and get them in the ground. And this is the green crop bean, which I had opened my pack. I had a pound pack like this size, but I opened it and um, grew those this year, and I did. I, I canned some green crop, green crop beans, and they did fine. From Hoss also, I have a one pound pack. Now this one pound pack, this is jade green, green bush beans. Now this pack says that it's got 1500 seeds in there. So see, that's a lot of seeds you get for a pound um, from seed companies. Uh, these house beans probably were more like 9.99 or 10.99 a pound. Um, usually anything I order off the internet runs more than the seeds I can get at the co-op, but some of the internet companies or seed catalog companies that I use have different, they just have different varieties. So I do all kind of sourcing. I, I source locally. I source off inter internet companies. I buy things out of my catalogs. If there's a seed in the store and I know it's in the store, I will go back there and look at that rack, you know. So that's how I run across varieties that you just don't see every day if you just run to a Lowe's or Home Depot. I, I end up with a lot of different things. Um, this is from Nichols Garden Nursery, open pollinated. It's called the Derby Bush Bean. Can't wait to plant that. Here's a seed company I don't think I've talked about before. It's called the um, South, you really can't hardly see the little logo there. It's S, S G S C. I'm sorry, S G S C. But anyway, it stands for South Georgia Seed Company. Now, this one that I have here is the Strike bush bean. I think Strike is a very popular um, bean that a lot of people grow and have really good luck with. I, I don't know why I haven't bought it from any other company before. I just, they had these and they only had like 50 seeds in them, but I bought some from South Georgia Seed Company. I need to put them in the ground. I believe I was watching Homestead Hearts videos on YouTube. I, I'm almost positive that they grow strike. I think that's the bean that she was talking about. 
And like that's their go-to bean. If I'm mistaken about that, I apologize, but I think I, that's the one. So I can't wait to plant it and see if I have the kind of luck that she has on there. From Renee's Garden, this is called a Classic Slenderette. Their packages have artwork as their pictures, but they're just beautiful. I love them. And this is, I think, one of the fillet beans, the real thin beans that um, grow. They're a more dainty, kind of delicate bean. Okay, from my co-ops, I got the Roma 2 beans. Oops. The Roma 2. And you see this pack was only $2.95. It's not a pound. Um, it's a half pound. So, still, if you're looking at, you know, 12, 1300 beans per a pound or more, you know, you, you may have six to 700 beans in there in that little 295 pack. Another 495 pack, the Contender Bush Bean. Lots and lots of people have grown contenders. You can get these seeds at any of your local hardware stores usually. Um, the Contender is a really go-to brand for a lot of people that they like to grow and it's very reliable. And my last one, my open pollinated, I did grow this last year, and it did great. It's called Dulcina, D-U-L-C-I-N-A, Dulcina, and it's from Johnny Seeds. This, uh, the, what differentiates this bean is it's called a Romano bean. It's, it's wide and kind of flat and wide. It's not just your typical round green bean. It's called a Romano bean, but it it grew great i ended up getting some cutworms out in my garden and i did not know at the time really what cutworms were and the beans were just growing great and thriving and they had already started um, putting off pods that were you know harvestable size and i would go out there in the morning or just whenever during the day and the whole top of the plant would just be chopped off and the leaves laying on the ground and I didn't know what was going on. Um, I know, you know, the damage hornworms can cause, and I know what that looks like, but this was just different. It's just like the plant had been just, and you know, everything's laying on the ground. And then, of course, big chomps taken out of some of the beans. So I didn't know what it was. I researched it and found out pretty much by the description it was cutworms. But when I would go out there, they said go out at like dusk time, and you can usually catch them. And the only way to really kind of get rid of them is to just kill them or uh, get some soapy dishwater and just kind of put pick them off the plant, put them in the dishwasher, in dishwater, things like that. But I could not ever find the worm. To this day, I have not seen the cut worm. And I tried. I tried at all times. I'd wait till a little towards dark and try to go out there with a flashlight. And I could not catch the dadgum things. And they ate just about all my dulcina beans up and part of my Capitano Romano beans that also were gorgeous. So the beans do fine. The cutworms need to go. <laughs> I'll have to work on that. Okay, here's the hybrid seeds. These, like I said, have been genetically uh, selected and bred for hardiness by the different companies or the different seed growers. These are from Burpee. This is called the Kitchen King. And you can probably plant these seeds and for sure get a harvest. Uh, I just, a lot of these burpee seeds do really good. Um, I have nothing bad to say about them. This is called the Heavy Harvest Garden Bean. And the last one is called the Big Kahuna. Big Kahuna Bean. I have grown the Big Kahuna. I'm very happy with it. The production was wonderful. And the beans get about up to like 11 to 12 inches long. They, they get long. It's a, it, that's why they call them the big kahunas because they're big beans. What I didn't like about them, and I, you hate to criticize a beautiful plant, you know, but here I go. What I didn't like about them was they make kind of thick leaves, not just your regular bean leaves, but it's kind of a thick, almost um, like a, a kumquat tree type leaf, if you know what that is. And they they curled over, and then all the harvest would be under it. So you were kind of fighting these leaves to get at your beans. Uh, a lot of the times when there's a, a hybrid, they'll breed for things to produce on top of the leaves for easy production and things like that. 
Well, they missed the boat on the big kahunas because the leaves really were hard to work around when you were harvesting. But the beans themselves were beautiful, were big, and uh, I enjoyed growing them. From Thresh Seed Company, this might be a new company for me to talk about with you. Thresh Seed Company. They are out of Stewart, Iowa. Iowa has lots of uh, good seed companies and things like that. But this is called a Prevail Bean. Prevail. And I've heard of that bean before from different companies. This is called the Speedy Bean, and it's from Territorial Seed Company. Um, it, it's a 50-day plant, so it came out quick. It grew out quick, and it set pods and was my first bean to to come out last year. So I was harvesting speedy beans before I was harvesting anything else. The only thing is, they it was very quick. It was like, say, a busy week of checking them and harvesting off of them, and then they were done. So sometimes, you know, you can get a couple weeks out of some of these beans of really heavy harvest. Uh, some of them will stop harvesting, and then they'll get blooms again and have like a second set come on. Um, but my speedies just kind of blew into town and blew right out of town. <laughs> but it's a good one to have. And if, you know, you can get a few quarts put up of them. It, it's, you know, I think the seeds, probably 2 or $3 for the pack of seeds. And um, they did find from Johnny's, I have two beans. This one I have not grown yet. It's called Affirmed. Affirmed. Now, this says it averages 1,850 seeds per pound. That's a lot of seeds. 1,850 seeds per pound. So, that's the affirmed bush bean from Johnny's. Now, this one is from Johnny's, and it's called the Provider. I'm going to make a lot of people mad with this. This seed is supposed to be so good. A lot of people say it's their go-to seed. I have tried it twice, and I, I will take responsibility if it's me, but I don't see it. It, it does horrible. I, I think it is, okay, Johnny's is out of Maine. I think it just might like a little more moderate climates. I don't think it likes South Louisiana humidity and, and heat. I just don't think. I mean, even if I plant it, you know, towards the end of March, where my other beans just come up and do great and thrive. My providers just look so sickly and things like that. And I've got a lot of seeds left because I had bought a pound. But it's going to be a while before. I don't like to waste seeds, but it's going to be a while before I put any more of these in the ground. Because I've tried twice and both times it just doesn't seem to have hardiness. Maybe it's the area. We'll just say it's the area. Because so many other people like it. Let me know what you think. If the provider has done great for you, if there's a trick to it, let me know because I do not want to waste my seeds. I have two packages. They're the same thing, and they're from the same company. Different packaging, but the same thing. They just changed their packaging. But it's the Momentum Bush Beans from Hoss Tools. Momentum. I planted these last year, and I loved them. They did great. They produced they kept producing, you know, over the course of a week or two. And, um, but it's, that's the thing about bush beans. Bush beans and pole beans are different in that respect. Bush beans kind of come and produce hot and heavy, sometimes like two weeks, sometimes a little less than that. And then a lot of times they're done. Like I said, some of them will, uh, my royalty purple pod beans, they did put on a second set of blooms, um, the year I planted them and put off another set of beans and all. Not all of them do that. They kind of come and go, but the momentum is is a good one to plant. Uh, your pole beans, now they'll take a little longer to set pods and to, to grow, but they might just keep slowly putting off beans all the way up to the fall. So there's it's good and bad. It depends on what you want to do. The reason I like bush beans so much is because I like to do canning. And when you're doing canning, it just helps to have a lot of your harvest come on in. You know, if you're going to be canning beans, you know, for say two weeks, you're gathering all your green beans and, you know, putting them in. I, I, what I do is chop them into little one inch, two inch pieces, put them in freezer bags. And then when the harvest is over, I spend the day canning all the beans up. If you're growing pole beans, you might get more beans in the long run. 
but you're going to get them over a longer period of time. And you might not have that, you know, one day of canning that you want to do at the end of a few weeks. Um, it just depends on how you want to do it. Uh, I love growing pole beans too. And it, pole beans would be great, you know, if you want to harvest some each night to cook for supper and things like that. But your harvest is so much more spread out, is what I'm saying, than it is with the bush beans. Bush beans are really good for people who like to can because they come, they they hit, you can harvest them and be canning in a short order and get the, the bush beans done and out your way. So these momentum bush beans are definitely on my spring roster for this year. That'll be one, hopefully, I'll have in my freezer to sell people good fresh frozen green beans if they come by. Okay, now let's move on to yellow beans. Okay, here we go. For the yellow beans, for heirloom beans, I don't have near what I have for green beans, so it's not gonna take near as long. But I love yellow beans. I haven't had the greatest of luck with them, but I think I found out why. It's my fault. If a lot of the yellow beans are black seeded, you can see the Cherokee wax. They have the black seeds, dark black. Well, the black seeded beans, they can be planted in a lot cooler soil than the white or the brown or the purple seeded beans. And I was just planting them around the same time as I was the other beans. And the other beans would be doing fine and my Cherokee wax and things like that would just be not great. I, I did put up some, but not great. Uh, Deep South Homestead grows Cherokee wax all the time, and I'm, I, I see them having the best luck with them, and then mine would just look not great. So I wasn't sure what was going on, but I think what it is is I'm planting them too late. And when it starts getting really, really hot here, they just were dwindling. They weren't doing good. So what I'm going to do this year, and I've already marked it on my schematic, is my black seeded yellow beans that I'm going to plant. I'm definitely putting out a little earlier. But around mid-March is when I think I'm going to put my yellow beans in the ground and see if by planting them earlier, they do better. So that's my goal. This bean is absolutely beautiful, and I can't wait to plant it. It's from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds, and it's called the Bureau de Rockencourt. Cannot wait to plant that. And it says on here it's one of the oldest yellow wax beans grown in France for 150 years. See, some of these beans have been around forever. It's heirlooms I'm showing you, by the way, right now, if I didn't specify that. So this bean has been around 150 years. I can't wait to show it. The Cherokee wax that I showed you was one of them that I get from the co-ops. Another one I get from the co-op. I got this one at the Circle T in Poplarville, Mississippi. But it's called the Golden Top Notch Bush Bean golden top notch and i have another pack of it a small pack that i got from the south georgia seed company you know two dollars or some probably two dollars or 250 for this pack 2.95 for this pack you know half pound pack probably has 700 seeds versus 50 seeds so i, I want to support both types of companies. Believe me, I, I don't mind sending an order every now and then, but really and truly bang for your buck, the co-op seeds. Um, you just can't, you can't beat it. Pencil Pod Bush Bean is from Pine Tree Seed Company. Pine Tree Garden Seeds. I haven't grown it yet, but I know it's supposed to be a really popular yellow bean. Only 52 days, so that's good. And I also got a pack of Cherokee Wax from Burpee. So that's my heirloom beans. I have a few open pollinated beans. I have a big pack. Yeah, this is a one pound pack. It's called Golden Butter Wax Bush Beans. And it's from Fedco. From Fedco. I believe they're out of Maine. Yeah, Clinton, Maine. Some of the websites said the Golden Butter Wax was an heirloom. But Fedco, who I ordered them from, called it an open pollinated. They did not refer to it as an heirloom bean. So that's what I'm going with. I'm calling it an open pollinated. So if you're watching this and you say, oh, no, that's an old heirloom. We've grown it for 100 years. You might be right. I'm just calling it open pollinated because Fedco said it was. And Burpee has a gold rush bush bean. 
I'd love to try that one too. This one says it's stringless. And from Territorial Seeds, this is the Capitano Romano. Absolutely beautiful bean, thick. It's a, a flat Romano bean. It's the one that my cut short worms started eating on right at the end last year, but I was able to do most of my harvest before they started tearing them up. And I would definitely grow this again. Matter of fact, I thought I had planted all my seeds out there and I didn't. So I have these left. So I'm excited because I will definitely plant that again this year. And the Romano beans just give you so much bang for your buck because if you're canning beans, um, if you go to the store and you buy the large flat Italian beans that are canned in, in the cans, that's what a Romano bean is. It's like a large flat Italian bean. And, you know, they're, they're, they're big and meaty and just great for canning. And this is another one of their bush beans called a Carson yellow bean, open pollinated. So can't wait to try those. The only hybrid that I have of yellow bush beans is from Renee's Garden, and it's called the Rock Dior. Some people just uh, leave out the apostrophe and call it a Rock Dior, um, however you want to say it, but it's a French specialty bean. So, right now, that's all the yellows that I have. We'll move on to the purples. Okay, for the purple and the red type beans that I have, I only have four, so it shouldn't take but a second. The first one that I have is from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. It's called a purple teepee bean. Purple teepee. Haven't tried it. I'm going to, though. And I also have from them a red bean called the red swan bean. That's a beautiful bean. Beautiful bean. And the other two that I have... Their, their names are slightly different, so it can get confusing, but I'll show you the one first that I have planted. It's called the Royalty Purple Pod Bean, just in my Ziploc. It's a brown seeded bean, Royalty Purple Pod. I would highly recommend these if you can get them in your area. These seeds came from uh, Circle T Feed and Seed in Franklinton. They grow great. Uh, they're little short bush plants. They're very short but they put off a lot of beans. Uh, I grew these the very first year that I ever had a garden, uh, spring of 2012, well, last year, spring of 2020. The first year I really had a true garden that I was so excited about. And I chose a few varieties that really hit and made me feel good about gardening. And this was one of them. So I suggest you grow that if you can. The second one, this, the, the one I just said was Royalty Purple Pod Bean. This one is called Royal Burgundy Purple Pod. I guess they're a little bit different. When you look them up on the internet, they are a different bean. You can pull up either one on the internet, but their names are just a little different. Royal Burgundy Purple Pod and Royalty Purple Pod. Okay, now I'm gonna go over my shell and dry bean. All of these I'm showing you, it's a whole bunch of them. Uh, they're all heirlooms. At the very end, I have one variety that I have that's a hybrid, but I tend to gravitate towards heirloom dried beans. I just, I, again, their stories kind of suck me in. If I if I read about them, you know, their stories kind of suck me in. So I end up with a lot of heirloom dried and shell beans. From Annie's Heirloom Seeds, I have the yellow eye bush bean. Yellow eye bush bean. It's kind of a pale bush bean, but it has like a yellow like a black eyed pea has a black little marking there in the middle of those. These have a yellow. So I haven't planted them yet. It's a 90 day bean. This is a flagellet bush bean. And if you ever have ordered a cassoulet at a restaurant, you know, where they have the beef and all for, um, in French food, cassoulet, this is usually the bean that's in that. Now here again, this is, I have it in my shell bean category. This is a cranberry bean. But I'm thinking that it's probably just like that Tongues of Fire and that Borlato cranberry bean that I have that it was in my other pile, in the green pile. So I think the cranberry bean is probably that same bean. When I grow it out, I bet you it looks just like those. So, but I have, they specified that these were just a dried bean from this company. So that's where, that's where I have them. Uh, this is called a Calypso bean. I have not grown these yet, but it's a, Pure white with pure black markings on them. This is the Jacob's Cattle Bush Bean. It's a very beautiful bush bean. Now, this pack came from Annie Seeds, 
but I had ordered a pack last year from Baker Creek. Um, I was having trouble, like I said, with some of my beans thriving. One of them that didn't thrive was the Jacob's Cattle Beans. But a few of them uh, I let dry on the vine and I harvested the seeds out of them just so I would have some saved seeds. But I just want to show you what they look like. A Ziploc is not the best thing to show you. But you see how they're a maroon with white markings on them? That's why they call them um, cattle beans because they kind of look like the mottled look you have on the cattle. From Baker Creek, I ordered a bean last year called the, I call it the Mabombo. That's how it's spelled, Mabombo beans. I don't know if that M is supposed to be silent. I'm not sure, but I just call them the Mabombo beans. I did harvest a good many of them, but I did the other ones as like a green shell bean, and I ended up putting them in my freezer, and I actually cooked them. I just saved a few extras as for seed for later so that I could keep them going. I try to do that. That's my goal to do that. Sometimes I might end up with uh, just a few, like my Jacob's cattle. I might end up with five or six seeds, but I figure if I can end up with any of them, I'm going to try, you know, so that I can keep that variety going. Okay, the next one that I have is from Nichols Garden Nursery, and it's called a Santa Maria Pinquito Bean. This is the packaging, and, I, and it's, got, it's still got a lot left in it. I just planted a, a little row of these and I harvested these for seed as well. So let's do it a little closer where you can see them. They're smaller than um, a pinto bean. They're smaller than that. But they make this little rosy colored pink bean. I haven't eaten any of them yet. I haven't cooked them. I just kind of did these to save seeds, but you know, at any point in time I might try them because I still have a lot of seeds left in that package. Okay, to finish off my heirlooms, this is just your regular pinto bean. See, a pinto bean is an heirloom. It's been around a long, long time. My, my packaging is kind of folded up there at the top. But uh, at first, I kind of didn't do anything with them um, for a while. And then this spring, I just decided, let me plant them and just see. I don't know why. It, to me, pinto beans were just boring. And so I didn't plant them the whole first year I had these seeds. But I planted them this year, and I'm so glad I did. Uh, I love growing them. You really just grow these to let them dry, and they make when they go from being green to kind of being a um, pink and white bean, and then right at the end they they dry up and all, but they turn into a tan colored pod with purple stripes all down it. So that's kind of when you. It was funny because it's almost like a timer going off in the beans. You didn't harvest them as a dried bean until those purple streaks took the place of those pinkish streaks on the uh, pod. And once the purple streaks appeared, that bean was dried. You could just crack it open and the little beans would fall out, the pinto beans. And I just thought they were beautiful. I enjoyed harvesting these last year. Um, I ended up with a whole pint, I think, full of save seed. This is called a Dwarf Horticultural Improved Taylor Bean. It's got a long name, a very long name. Dwarf Horticultural Improved Taylor. It's a very pretty bean. You can see it. It's got some little pink and red in it and tans. It's a very pretty bean and I've grown it before. If you harvest it early, you can use it as a snap bean. You can let it go later and use it as a shell bean or you can let it dry on the vine and harvest the seeds as dried bean. Okay, the heirlooms that I have from the next company, all of these over here, I believe, are from Seed Savers Exchange. Of course, that's all they do at Seed Savers is heirloom seeds. And if you just have nothing to do one day, get on their website and just go through all their pictures and all of their varieties, even if you don't make an order. <laughs> it's just so fun and exciting to go through all the different varieties that Seed Savers offers. It's so exciting. And I have a few of them here, but I, I, it's the tip of the bucket, you know, with, um, with all that they have. This first one, their packaging you can't see through, but this is called Tiger Eye. Tiger Eye. But I grew it last year, and this is some of the saved seeds that I kept, and it makes the prettiest beans. They're almost orange, almost pure orange, and they have these purple stripes all over them. I'm hoping you can see them as good as I'm 
trying to show you. But they have little purple modeling and stripes all over them. They're so pretty, just so pretty. And um, they're supposed to be really easy to cook. They get really tender when you cook them and everything. Uh, I haven't cooked mine yet, but I have these seeds that I saved um, because it's an heirloom. I, I just try to try to do that if I can. This one is called the Painted Pony, Painted Pony Bean. And I might just have to open it and show you. This bean is just gorgeous. If you can see that bean, it's just gorgeous. It's a tan bean with brown and then some some little black eyes on them, but they're just gorgeous. This one is called the Aracara Yellow Bean. And can't wait to grow that. This one is called Lena Cisco's Bird Egg Bean. And Lena Cisco, I believe, was one of the founding people that helped start Seed Savers Exchange. And supposedly this bean was brought by her grandmother like in a covered wagon many years ago. And she ended up giving some of the seeds to seed savers to start their collection. Now they sell it. So when you when you know things like that and you know that people have done a lot of work to preserve a bean, you kind of want to do that when you grow it too. You don't want to just plant it, harvest it cook it and it's gone. You know, you kind of want to help with it. So I did plant that last year. It grew fine. It grew great. And look how many saved seeds I have from that bean. A whole pint jar full of saved seeds. So I'm so excited about that. Uh, I saved these. I got a, a, this is called Ireland Creek Annie Beans from Seed Savers. Just a brown tan bean. Um, they only sold little packs of these last year, so I got a little pack. I'm thinking it might have had 25 seeds in it. Uh, I probably have a couple, maybe a couple of hundred, 150, 175 beans in there. I'm not really sure. It's more than you think when you go to count them. Um, so they didn't, they weren't real prolific here, but I'm going to give them another try. The same with these. This is a purple bean called Kebarica. And I didn't... I don't know how many came in my original pack, but they grew pretty good. Um, sometimes, you know, it might have a big long pod, but when you go to open the pod, there might only be like five beans inside it. So for me to show this and say that's the product of planting, you know, you might think that's not great. But the way I look at it is if I, end, if I have, say, 200 seeds in here and I only started out with 40 you know I've I've multiplied my production for planting again now if you were wanting to cook this right now no it's not going to give you a whole whole lot to cook for your family but in this day and time I, I kind of I analyze things different ways for my personal use I'm not talking talking about market gardening right here I'm talking about for my personal use the way I analyze things is kind of building up um, storage and I feel like things like this are an asset to me uh, I planted 40 and and you know have five times the amount of seeds now if I planted half of these and got that many you know you can you can build up a supply of emergency seeds and so that's the way I look at this and you know you don't always you might not always be able to just pick up the the phone or the inner get on the internet or whatever and order seeds but if you've created a pretty good supply in the background, you will always have seeds. It's like with the Painted Pony. I still have a ton because the seed is not very big. And I ordered, this is a pound, but I'm telling you there, there had to be more than 2,000 something seeds in here. And I still have most of them. But yet, just by growing them, you know, I ended up with this half pint jar packed full of seeds. So... I planted some, but I ended up with five or six times as many. So to me, it's that's you're kind of building your seed storage, just building it and building it and building it. And to me, when they talk about food security all the time, that's the new words to use, food security, you know, basically eating. You just, you want to eat. Uh, when you know you want to eat, to me, having um, some seeds, some good heirloom seeds and all that you can plant and know that you can put them in the ground and they can produce some food. 
to me, that's a big asset. So I don't always look at it as to what I can eat right now. It's what I have in the background growing in this seed collection. That's the way I look at it. The last seeds I'm going to show you, this is called Jacob's Cattle Gold. Jacob's Cattle Gold. It's from Thresh Seed Company. And it's a, a twin kind of bean to the regular Jacob's Cattle Bush Bean. Jacob's Cattle Bush Bean is maroon and white. These are gold and white. But it's a hybrid that was crossed off of the Jacob's Cattle Bush Bean. So, and they made a gold coloring out of it. So, and this is a beautiful looking bean. Beautiful looking. So, I look forward to growing that. I hope you've enjoyed looking at all my bean seeds with me. I hope that uh, you saw some that you might have. Or if I said that I had grown it and gave a little tips on what happened with my beans, I hope that might help you with your beans. I hope you can feel the excitement that I feel around my seeds. I just love um, talking about them and looking at them. I've got so many others I'd like to show you. I've, I've got a few fabas. I've got some edamame. I've got pole beans. I've got limas. <laughs> I've got a lot of different kind of beans, and I'd love to just show them to you and talk to you about them. I will do that in the coming up episodes. I'm trying to think of what I want to do next. I'm not sure. I have a lot of tomato seeds, a lot of pepper seeds. Um, hmm. We're going to have to think about what the third episodes of Seeds of Palooza will be. What would you like it to be? Put it in the comments. If you're curious about a certain vegetable or want to know some varieties of that vegetable, put it in the comments and I'll see if I can do that one next. I'd love to do it. Thank you for joining me. This is Lainey with Camp Joy Farms. I hope you enjoyed the second episode of Seeds of Palooza talking about bush beans. Please go grow something. Get something in the ground as soon as you can. Make plans for this spring to put something in the ground and start growing your own food. Good luck and thank you. Bye-bye.